2011 was one of the most important years in RuneScape history. While there's no single big event like the removal of free trade or the evolution of combat, 2011 saw a lot of major events happen over a very short period of time. Jagex first got the idea of EOC from players talking to the combat council at RuneFest, the Golden Scythe drama, next the loyalty program, RuneScape's first fully voice acted quest, Hacks unit stole the rotten potato, Jagex released the bot nuke and Jack Mob was hired for beating it. I've already made videos about a number of these topics, but there's also one significant event in 2011 that ties a few of them together, and hasn't really been more than a footnote in those tales. One of the most infamous videos in RuneScape history. A video simply titled, Is This the Good Deal? by a player moderator named Jiblix. A lot of people consider this to be the most influential RuneScape video of all time. And it's easy to think that, if you don't know the full story. But we don't just tell you what you already know on this channel. I don't make a video unless there's at least one piece of information that you won't find anywhere else on the topic. So let's see just how important this video really was. And speaking of important stuff, let me quickly introduce you to the futuristic world of Mech Arena. Ever wanted to play a console shooter but you only have your phone with you? Well now you can with this team-based 5 vs 5 tactical shooter that's got everyone covered. Like skill-based competitive play? We got you. Only like to play a quick casual match every now and then? We got you. Don't like mechs? I know you're lying. Everyone like mechs. No, really. The game has tons of customization features, so you can build a mech of your dreams and send it to slaughter all your opponents. Here's the mech I made. It kinda looks like a chicken if you squint hard enough. And just like chickens in real life, it shoots anti-tank rounds for maximum damage. Now that's what I call a clocking good time. Take on foes in control point capture, 5 vs 5 and 2 vs 2 deathmatches, tournaments and all with your friends by your side. Or if you don't have any friends, you can play by yourself as well. It's alright, I'll be your friend. There's a ton of special events happening this month, with the Golden Week celebrations for the weeps and Easter events for all the normal people. The game just keeps growing, so the events are bigger than ever with huge rewards to boot. I don't even know where to put half of my mechs anymore. Now I know what you're thinking. The game is free to play on Android and iOS, but you want a little extra to really get you going. So just between you and me, here's my personal link to a starter pack worth $45. It contains a mil spec skin, 500 A coins and 70,000 credits. I don't just show this to anyone, you know. And hey, if you really want to take things to the next level, feel free to add me in game. Maybe we'll play a game or two. I've always preferred robots tearing each other apart to candlelit dinners anyway. So what are you waiting for? The links are there, get playing! Maybe you'll even have a match with me while you're watching this video. Now that's what I call living in the future. <laughs> To understand why this video was such a big deal, we first need to introduce its creator. Jiblik started his RuneScape adventure in 2005, but in 2008 found himself drawn to the skiller community, a group of players embarking on a pacifist run of the game, leveling their skills and beating as many quests as they could without ever gaining combat XP. Jiblix quickly found himself among the best of them, raising many skills to 99 despite this self-imposed restriction. What really made Jiblik stand out, however, was that he had a knack for video making. As a skiller, he was uniquely positioned to make skiller guides on how to do quests and train skills, speaking from experience instead of just reading off the wiki or something. Jiblix's friendly and outgoing personality was well known to everyone in the skiller community and shone through in the videos he made, making him a well-known and well-loved member in the RuneScape community as a whole and a name that Jagex very quickly came to know as well. Jagex moderators would occasionally appear in some of his uploads, playing alongside him or attending his parties. This close connection to the staff meant that, as 2010 came around, he became a player moderator. No one was surprised. He seemed like an ideal candidate for the role. In fact, he was also made a forum moderator, meaning he was one of an elite few who were dual moderators, with privileges both in-game and on the official site. It's kind of hard to express just how influential Jiblix was on the greater community. Everyone knew his name, he had friends in high places, and he had a very nice account as a part of a relatively niche community. Other skillers were ecstatic to see him succeed, and his name certainly ranked among other legends from that community, such as Zamorak or Pure KQ Pax. 
Even when he failed his skiller in 2010, accidentally gaining combat experience when training the brand new skill, Dungeoneering. He remained a popular figure in the community as he started playing the game normally and finally started leveling all of his combat skills. What was originally a source of great despair turned into a source of celebration as he eventually achieved 99 Dungeoneering on August 14th, 2011. It's kind of funny that he hit this on that day in particular, because it's kind of a calm before the storm moment. Giblix was at the height of his popularity, he was seen as a community champion, and any comment he made on the state of the game would be taken extremely seriously. And just a day later, on August 15th, 2011, he proved just how true that was. It's incredible. Great. We're surprised. <laughs> awesome. we're, we're, we're thankful uh, to our players and our staff. I think yeah. it's incredible. In 2009, Jagex won the UK Developer of the Year in the Golden Joysticks. In fact, they won it by a lot. With over a million votes across all the categories, they'd even managed to crash the site when voting opened that summer. This was a great moral boost for the company. People patted themselves on the back, congratulated each other for making such a good game and got back to work. In 2010, Jagex won the award a second time, being named the best UK developer for two years in a row. And to be fair, they probably were. There were a few big game companies in the UK at the time, but it was still a fairly small landscape, and Jagex definitely had some of the best talent backing them. RuneScape definitely had its problems, but the makers of the game really cared about the world that they were building, and wanted to make the game the best it could be. And as a thank you to the entire community, Jagex added a cosmetic golden hammer to the game for players to use, with two emotes, one for each award. Maybe they'd even add a third when they won again next year. Well, 2011 rolled around and Jagex were once again nominated. However, this time, it was in a different category. Best free-to-play game. Jagex probably didn't think much of this, but the players definitely did. See, while the staff behind the game were passionate, the game had a lot of problems. And a lot of bots. Especially in free-to-play. While Jagex had put a lot of work into regular updates, their eyes were mostly on the paying customers of the game, with the free version left to fester. And because of that, bots had grown out of control, dominating any semi-profitable resource they could find, automating it into oblivion. Jagex made an announcement in July, saying they know of the problem and want to make the game more enjoyable for the legitimate players. All while more bots continued to flood in by the hundreds. So when Jagex wanted people to vote for them as the best free-to-play game, players were certainly ready to make their voices heard, but not in the way that Jagex intended. Enter Giblix. As a significant community member, Giblix loved the game. He wanted to see it do as well as it could. He wanted to see Jagex do as well as they could. But to vote for them as the best free-to-play game felt like it would be sweeping the glaring issues under the rug, giving Jagex a free pass in a serious matter that they definitely needed to be doing more about. But despite being a community figure who many people would trust implicitly, he wasn't just going to tell people to vote no. He wanted them to know exactly what they were voting for. He wanted to spread awareness. So, armed with a screen recorder and basic video making knowledge, Giblix went to some of the bot infested sites and filmed their activities, before compiling it together and uploading it as one of the most infamous RuneScape videos of all time. The video spread across the RuneScape community like wildfire. While Giblix only had a few hundred subscribers and averaged a few thousand views per video, it didn't take long for this scathing display to hit a hundred thousand views, and Giblix gained several thousand new subscribers overnight. 
The comments are almost entirely supportive of Jiblix, calling him brave for standing up to Jagex at a time where most other player moderators sucked up to them. The forums are ablaze with discussions about the video, with Jiblix himself gracing the threads with a green coat of paint to further express his feelings about Jagex. One of Jiblix's Jmod friends privately messages him, asking him to take the video down, claiming that it would be in his best interest to do so. Jiblix refuses, wanting his voice to be heard. It doesn't take long for him to be stripped of both his moderator roles. A lot of people see this as some sort of great injustice against Jiblix, but to be fair, player and forum moderators are volunteer positions with Jagex. They're not obligated to let someone keep their privileges if they're publicly disparaging the company. And with an unprecedented tide of hatred turning against the staff, it's only natural that the higher-ups were calling to cut him down to size. But hey, when has the community ever let rational thinking get in the way of a good riot? It was time to head to World 66. Ready the cannons and get to shouting. Falador is overridden with rioters, with all sorts of demands blending into one another. Some are shouting for Jagex to tackle the bot problem, having been blissfully unaware of just how bad it had gotten. Others are shouting for Jiblex to get his dual moderatorship back, since he was doing a damn better job than everyone else. Others are shouting for people to subscribe to the Will Missy channel so they can be notified when the Jiblix documentary is released over a decade later. Regular players and even player moderators reach out to Jiblix in private, expressing support for him, saying the quiet parts loud. The community seems almost entirely united behind their new messiah, with Jiblix taking the hit so that change could finally happen. As always, the riot fails to accomplish much by itself, and slowly dies down as players get bored and go back to playing the game. However, Is This the Good Deal proves to be the inciting incident for a shift in player attitude against botting for the months to come. Jiblix enjoyed a brief period of stardom, having an interview with Tippet, one of the largest RuneScape fan sites that September. He also continued to upload videos, a mix of reminiscing about the long gone golden days of the game, and more videos of the untempered bot problem, with a few unstopped fissures thrown in for good measure. Now I know what you're wondering. Did Jagex win the Golden Joystick Award that year? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. After the disastrous PR incident, Jagex went from an unchallenged first place to barely scraping third place, losing out against League of Legends for the title. A fact that Jiblix gleefully promoted on his YouTube channel to all his new subscribers. In fact, the golden joysticks had gone so disastrously for Jagex that they had been contacted by the awards organizers themselves to do something about their player base, as their fervent community had been spamming the comments of every category to tell people not to vote for Jagex. The players celebrated. They had sent their message to Jagex loud and clear. A small we're working on it wasn't enough. The bot problem was unacceptable. Go and sort it out. And with RuneFest 2011 right around the corner, Jagex couldn't deal with facing players in real life without having a solution ready to go. So right before the event, a bot nuke is announced and deployed, with botting being defeated almost entirely overnight. It's a nice story. A big community figure sacrifices their powers to bring everyone together and forces Jagex to deal with an unchecked problem. A real feel-good tale, right? Big shame that this isn't actually what happened. This is going to come as a big shock to a lot of you who remember this, but while Jiblix's video was really good at making the community aware of the botting problem, it changed practically nothing inside Jagex's studio at all. If you've got any experience with software development yourself, you might have noticed something fishy about this timeline. The bot nuke was a huge project with very few flaws. It took an unparalleled genius to beat it when it was released, with almost every bot maker thwarted at every step. That's not something you can start in mid-August and have ready by late October. That's because the bot nuke was 90% ready when Jiblix released his video. The reason Jagex had been so dismissive of the bot issue was because they had been working on it. They couldn't just up and say, we're working on a project that will take all the bots offline simultaneously, because that gives the bot makers the warning they need to start planning around it. You need to catch them off guard to stand a chance of beating them, which is exactly what Jagex did when they were ready. It's kind of like when you see vigilantes hunting down criminals and posting the footage online, only to find out they've messed up a year-long investigation that was almost ready to take them down for good. 
It seems like you're doing a good thing, but all you've done is cause trouble for the people who were working on it already. Remember the Jmod that messaged Jiblix asking him to take the video down? When you frame the whole thing as Jagex refusing to tackle the bot problem, it's easy to see that message as some sort of corrupt attempt at a cover-up. But in reality, it was likely just a mod wanting to help take the heat off the team while they were working on a solution, and let Jiblix keep both his moderator roles before things went too far. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not excusing Jagex for not tackling the bot problem earlier than they did. They absolutely shouldn't have ever let it get as bad as it was. As sad as it is to say, Jiblix's video wasn't some magnum opus that willed the bot nuke into existence. All it really did was cause the Jagex staff to get a ton of hate, and to guarantee that they lost the Golden Joystick Award for that year. With their loss at the Golden Joysticks, the Golden Hammer that Jagex gave everyone never saw a new emote. At RuneFest that year, the Golden Scythe was haphazardly handed out to a small selection of players in a very crude and controversial way, which led many people to believe that it was intended to be the celebratory item for the Golden Joystick Awards that had been repurposed last minute. This was later debunked by the creator of the item, Mod Rowley, however. That being said, Jiblix's video did make the players more bold when voicing their opinions. While player moderators had historically been almost entirely supportive of Jagex, more and more felt able to express their problems with the game. In November 2011, a few months after the incident, a former moderator, Ken Gnosis, had his own Jiblix moment when he made a thread criticizing Jagex for making the high scores a members-only feature, seeing it as a disservice to the many dedicated free players who had put immense time and effort into their accounts. While Jagex did say that they supported moderators having opinions that didn't align with theirs, history repeated itself once more, with Ken losing his moderator status for badmouthing Jagex, and not an awful lot being accomplished because of it. Thank you all so much for watching. It's kind of funny thinking about how so many people were, and still are, convinced that Jiblix was pretty much directly responsible for the bot nuke, when the truth is completely different. Kind of like the story of the climbing boots change being leaked by a Jagex moderator in 2010. Now that would make for an interesting video. Anyway, that's a story for another time. My name is Will Missit, and I'll see you all later.